President of Appliance Technical Institute of Canada and Toronto Appliance Service. Yeah. We've been doing this for how long? How long have you been an appliance service technician? Well, it started a long time ago. A long time in, ago when I was young. Early, when early, you were young. In the early 90s. Yeah. That's a long time ago. Immigrated to Canada. Yeah. 1989. In 1989. And then? And then um, from, actually from get go almost. Uh, I got this uh, opportunity to become a technician working yeah. for some uh, a company that was only doing service in the buildings. Right. Like repairing only dishwashers yeah. and fridges and uh, stoves. Very simple for metro right. housing uh, kind of stuff like that. Yeah. But you took like electrical engineering school back in Poland. Yeah. Like that was your, your foundation. Of course it helped you in the field. Understanding. That definitely is. A right. And that's why uh, well, what I finished back home was uh, a technical engineering school. Yeah. That um, um, uh, it took me five years to do that. Right. And uh, that definitely prepared me for this job. Reading yeah. diagrams and uh, very good knowledge of uh, electricity and powers right. and stuff. Right. But like did that. you know you wanted to do applying servicing, or like how didn't you, or what did you imagine you'd be doing after school? Of course, I didn't know that. Right. Back, back right. home I was a little bit practicing with uh, summer jobs, I, mm -hmm. I used to fix small vacuums in the company yeah. Yeah. Uh, for a month here, a month there. Um, my job was actually, when I was graduating, my uh, diploma, I had to mm -hmm. uh, construct brand new um, welding machine, I had to oh. a welding machine. So I had to Amazing. calculate it, I uh, calculated the transformer and everything else, mm -hmm. and that was my final exam when I finished my school. So I was preparing for the whole year. So things, right. were, things with appliances, I, would, I, was, I was never thinking that I'm going to actually do appliance business. Right. It right. just come along, my cousin called, he says, oh, this guy's looking for a patient. In Toronto. In Toronto. Yeah, yeah. I was here a few months, uh, uh, small English, almost no English. Um, like a lot of immigrants. Yeah, right. But still getting back with $5 yeah. in your pocket. That's yeah. how every immigrant comes to Canada. Yeah, exactly. So. And a shirt on your back. This guy yeah. picked me up on Saturday. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to check you to see if you can do it. First he asked me, do you know how to replace compressors? And I said, yeah, but I had no idea. Sure, anything uh -huh. to get the job. You know how many times I had to lie in an interview to get I the job? I had no idea about, uh, about yeah. replacing compressor. Yeah. Okay, but uh, that day he took me for a, for a ride mm -hmm. for three actually calls and each of them was electric stove. So I was very, very lucky. Easy. Because uh, I, I play, place with yeah. wires that I already right. know, and so you see potential I can learn this, mm -hmm. and I learned. Well, they hired me. I was working on the road for about a month. What did you charge for a service call in 1990? I didn't have a business then, so I don't know what the charge was. Oh, really? We we're doing only we we're only doing service for buildings, mm, not okay. private sector. Okay. Only uh, big corporate buildings. Oh, I see. So they had appliances there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what they charge. They pay us by the hour and whatever they charge. Ah, oh, okay, I see, by the hour. Okay, by that makes hour. sense. Yeah, so I had only one month of training on these three simple appliances. Mm -hmm. And then after some time, uh, there was this uh, person that we yeah. rent the place from. He says uh, his washing machine broke. Can you fix this? I said, sure, of course. You take a look at it at least. So I went to see that yeah. washing machine. It was old Westinghouse washing machine. They don't make them anymore. Right. When I opened the top and everything else, I see all the guts inside the wires. I had no idea what I'm doing there. No idea. I still played something that I'm a technician who could only fix washers, sorry, uh, the, the fridges, right, right. Uh, stoves, and dishwashers. Mm -hmm. So now I realized that I don't know anything. Now I realize that this trade needs yeah. education. Well, that's why like, you go in. The only way to actually become an appliance technician is to... Uh, be an apprentice, right? Like every skill trade. I think back in the 90s, there was no foundational skill trade schooling um, other than like engineering, of course, electrical engineering. Then you, those are, you know, the real foundations. But to get into a skill trade, it's always been apprenticing. Well, back in But applying servicing, there wasn't any. Back in the 90s, 
there was no access to any books. Unless, oh, exactly. Un unless you are... Or the library, or the no, bookstore. No, unless you are authorized uh, for Maytag or for Whirlpool oh, or, for yeah, yeah. or for Fidel. Or like wiring diagrams there. for the specific appliances. So, it's not like today you go on your... You can Google the wiring diagram, find yeah. whatever appliance it is. Those days, uh, day. if you, you are just no contract for any manufacturer, basically you, you have to use your own um, logical thinking. How, right. how to fix the appliance. The appliances, of course, were not so complicated those days. Where right, they, were, they were kind of simple yeah, appliances with some wires here and there, but still, yeah, yeah. they were giving problems, and people didn't know right. how to fix them. And even those days, it took about uh, two, three years to fix, to, uh, to learn them. For to, sure, to learn on how the to, road. How to fix on the road, and, yeah, yeah. and, and make, make the mistakes in the customer houses. Exactly. Of course, those appliances were all mechanical, different washing machines than today, mm. different dryer, well, kind of different than today. Definitely different ovens, those ovens right. those days were different than today, with the Wi-Fi and everything else. Uh, control, right. that's like but like making a mistake closet. back in the 90s is more mechanical. Here, now, if you make a mistake with an electrical wire, simple mistake can lead to more problems than back in the day when it was just mechanical in one sort of area of the appliance? Well, uh, uh, so you had to be more mechanical inclined at that right. time. Right, yeah, yeah. Because everything was done like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, fridges, for example, compressor replacement. Right, of course, uh, yeah. 20 years ago, 30 mm -hmm. years ago, or today, it's the same system. Right, it's weird that, that still so many technicians today don't want to touch refrigeration well, or silt systems or anything like that. And Proper understanding. Right. What yeah. Help, what you need fundamental with, training. What happened with that was yeah. that the school I finished, mm -hmm. we had a part of the, the curriculum in, ours, in my school right. about air conditioning and heating systems. Okay. That so you had the full that, that took, engineering, yeah, that technical took, engineering. That took me about, uh, I'd say, uh, five years, so about a mm -hmm. year and a half at least. We had right. this. So we learned that, and that helped me a lot to understand how the system works. Mm -hmm. People today don't understand. They think they do, but they right. don't. They yeah, just, yeah. Uh, there's lots of uh, people not knowing what they're doing. They well, exactly, and that's what, maybe that's why, you know, when we built that college in 2017, that was the idea behind it, is that there's such a big gap in knowledge for those who are, um, they have an engineering background and entering the trade, and then those who have absolutely no background whatsoever, but still trying to enter the trade. Well, let's start it from, yeah. from different angle. Yeah. Uh, this trade was always a uh, hunger of technicians. Always, always. always. Was there like was a, always a problem yeah, with technicians. Yeah, a shortage for technicians. From day one. Of good technicians. Yeah. yeah point, point was that uh, you can never find technicians. Right. There was a, a George Brown College at one point uh, some yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah. They used to have this uh, a, a program or something for technicians. I think it was like a, I'm not sure, three months, two months. Um, it was like the whole appliance servicing program. They were teaching yeah. basically the appliances from 60s and 70s. <laughs> right, right. That was those days. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, like Speed Queen and Admiral and stuff. Yeah, they yeah, don't, yeah. they're not there anymore. Uh, right. Speed Queen is still there, a newer version. Right. Okay, but yeah. uh, Admiral is all gone long time ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, Westinghouse also is gone. Right. They were very popular those days. So uh, there was no technicians, but the only person that could have come and uh, a technician to become a technician, just uh, get hired to some company and get, and then learn and then just apprentice. Where where job? Apprentice. Yeah, yeah. So this job was never ever like a legit uh, uh, trade. Trades. Trade. But even though I mean, there, I feel like since you know when I was building the college for three years now, and really going down to the fundamentals, like if you don't have the fundamental knowledge of basic electricity and learning what each component does and what it's used for and testing it properly, then being a technician going into the trade as an apprentice, you're really not learning to become an appliance service technician. You're just learning to become like a parts changer. Okay, I get it, this part is broken. Well, let's just replace it. But like, what does it do? Yeah. And is it really this component or is it something else? That's right? what the threat is right now with, uh, yeah. with uh, all the technicians, basically part changer. Part changers. If you work exactly. in a manufacturer, you go replace oh, yeah. three, four parts. One of them may solve the problem. <laughs> your 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 appliance works. You don't know what you did to make it work, yeah, but it works. It does. Right. And that, so who pays for that? If it's in the, in the field, the customer usually pays yeah, for so, four or five parts. So starting from the beginning again, when I came to Canada, yeah, uh, I, I didn't hear of uh, a trade called appliance technician. 
I've, right. heard, I've heard of an yeah. HVAC, electrician, mm -hmm. plumber, yeah. Yeah. Other, other guys, but not appliance technician. No, right. no such a thing. Yeah. Nobody even knew. Plus, the appliance technician was was even a, um, like a, mm -hmm. was called, you know, but of bad reputation, very bad reputation. It right. was, you know, right. uh, people were not really clean of those mm -hmm. days, and there, mm -hmm. there was those stores, they used to sell used appliances, and they right. they lied, yeah. they yeah. sell them without motors, compressors, without stuff. Wow. So many I bad things know, that happened, that. That happened yeah. those days, and the trade wasn't really great. Now, um, over the years, mm -hmm. when we started our Toronto appliance service, yeah. well, first we started, I started my company, um, it used to be called AC Appliance and Refrigeration. Right, this is 1990 when you joined that, them? That was 1990. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, during that time, uh, uh, yeah. I met with some uh, Italian boys mm -hmm. that needed to have uh, somebody who, who knows how to do seal system job. Exactly. <laughs> one, literally one in all of Toronto. And that was That's only it. seal system job. Yeah. So this guy uh, uh, asked yeah. me if I can come to uh, repair a um, compressor. For replace compressor, I said sure. So he offered me uh, some money for that, of course. Mm -hmm. So I was coming to replace compressors. And I right. met some other guys here and there, and that's how I come across the company of Toronto Appliance Service. Right. There were two right. older people. Yeah. One of them was retiring, and the other one wants to be in business. So I right. joined the other person, and that's mm -hmm. how the company came. Now. So you joined Toronto Appliance Service. It was already existing before you joined them. Yeah. And yeah. Then after a few years, you ended up purchasing it from. The actual owner? No, actually, uh, uh, before I joined it, I purchased it right away. Oh, it, oh amazing. This was, uh, yeah, yeah. this was the deal. This was a partnership or was it? A partnership. Okay, it yeah, so you bought it in 50%. So the company had right. basically only phone number. Yeah. That was yeah. operated out of the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the ex-owner uh, yeah. wife's house. Wow. Yeah. Well, which, I, <laughs> you believe it or not, a lot of service companies are coming out of yeah. people's homes, right? Well, the so company years hilarious. ago was big. The yeah. company years ago, it's 1975, so the company, the long term appliance service, yeah. used to have about 15 trucks. 1975 is when it first started. Yeah, and then... And it just the, the name Toronto Appliance Service, it's so, it, it's like the name for the appliance servicing industry, specifically in our area in Toronto. Toronto and, yeah. and you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I imagine so many people are trying to register their name Toronto Appliance Service, but it's already taken by you. Well, imagine how many companies want to be named Toronto Appliance Service. Very smart. Uh, Very smart, smart name. Smart name. As soon as you, you know, uh, Google search Appliance Service in Toronto, that is your entire name right there. Yeah. Toronto Appliance Service. Plus, so. plus uh, they were located actually mm -hmm. in, uh, they were located actually in uh, Toronto area by St. Clair and somewhere in um, right. Right, right. And that's why Toronto Appliance Service. Perfect and, name. And they, carry so yeah, far. They worked for Admiral Corporation. Right. They were doing all the work for them, yeah. all the warranty. They had so many trucks, and then Admiral Corporation has bankrupt. Right. So right, right. they reduced, of course, they lost the truck, the contracts, and everything, mm -hmm. and then all the guys went. So yeah. only yeah. only two person left in the company, and they started to just do their own calls right. over the years. Yeah. And over the years, uh, one of the partners became older, mm -hmm. uh, disabled a little bit, so he didn't want to work anymore. And uh, so that's how I took it over. And now yeah. we started again with just a phone number and no office and no nothing. Right. So once I took it over, <coughs> then we, after about six months, seven months, we moved mm -hmm. into the warehouse in Etobicoke. Okay. On Norseman. Yeah. And yeah. we were there for, I'd say, good four or five years. Right. I don't until, remember that one at all. Until they kick us out because they no. sold the building to somebody else. And, right. And somebody else wanted, because there was like few businesses in the building. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have the business, of the building all for themselves. So that's mm -hmm. why uh, they keep us out. So, and then we moved here. And ever since, yeah. we are here. Well, right. we changed yeah. locations because we became bigger and bigger and bigger. And but that's the plan, right? It's always to add more technicians, get more administrative staff, and get more contracts and warranty contracts and building contracts. And So the problem right. with this here, there's a job. There's yeah. always a job. Mm -hmm. the, the question is, who is going to do the job? Who's going to fill that position uh, for your company? Right. Yeah. So how many technicians have you trained? I mean, you've been here since uh, 1995 with Toronto Appliance Service? In this location. Yeah. And so how many technicians have you taken here, completely green, didn't have any background? Also, you must have trained some who have like electrical backgrounds too, right? 
But how many technicians do you think you trained from 1985 until today? Okay, so you see, personally, there was there was a lot of a lot of issues getting people, the right people. Right. When you yeah. advertise for a, 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 a technician, yeah, a job bank or one of these uh, okay. uh, paid uh, companies, agencies, you're yeah, getting yeah. you're getting everybody, but no Anybody. one knows right. this trade. Exactly. And no one can. Yeah can be doing this trade. Not, not right. everybody can do it. You have to be yeah. dedicated, just like any and other so, job. so, you know, they had to apprentice yeah. with you. So how many people do you think you want to uh, ballpark? 100, 150? I think I have a list of about 180 people of that life. went through this place. That's un unbelievable. You trained yourself 180 yeah, people, people to work in your, in your, and how many stayed? How many would you say? Uh, nobody. <laughs> well, I mean, today, yes, and they're not here. It's true. Well, actually, one guy just retired. Right, and I think he was your longest technician, 16 years? 17 years. 17 years, I'm gonna say like, that never happens. In this yeah. trade, it never happens. It's a long time. 17 years yeah. someone stayed there. And here. actually, I, yeah. I trained that guy longer mm -hmm. than anybody else. But normally I trained uh, yep. yeah. uh, two, three months, and of course, I was picking just anybody. Just a Like buddy, every other just company? Any, just anybody, yeah. I'm trying yeah. to, I tried to convert this person to be a, a technician. Mm -hmm. Give him the uh, examples, the tools know, he teaching, needs, the fundamentals, sort of in those three months. Yeah. You're riding along with him every single day, yes. showing him the ropes on the road. 180 people for well, three months. Over the three months, and then that's he, and I can't then, even imagine how many years that is in trainings only. Yep, and money, right? I would spend. Cool. And you're paying them because on an hour rate. Them. Yes, we pay them yeah. an hour rate. For yeah. being trained, yeah. and then of course when they're on their own, and they realize that it's difficult. Right because they don't know this, it's because they haven't, they haven't learned from the beginning. That, that was the problem. They learned only right. what I showed them. I know okay. this already, mm -hmm. but he's seeing it in process, and right. that process isn't enough for him to understand the basics actually, of it. actually understand step by step. You know, you come in, you greet the customer, you, you listen to the chief complaint, and then you sort of do your diagnosis on yeah. that complaint. And so really learning that just by seeing rather than doing is, is difficult. So. Uh, right. Coming to this conclusion, yeah. at one point, some 15 years ago, yeah. Yeah. there was this uh, uh, a person, colleague that I know, mm -hmm. used to work for uh, TELUS as executive uh, uh, manager of, for Canada, I think. Right. And then his idea was uh, to uh, start the school. Right, a training institute for appliance technicians. Some kind of uh, school yeah. Yeah. to uh, teach appliance uh, trade because there's no such a school. Exactly. And, and yeah. I partnered with him for some time yeah. to build this. Right. Okay. But then somehow everything just uh, it just fizzled just out, fa right? Faded out. You need someone, you know, dedicated yeah. day by day, every day to make this go through. Yeah. And right. so, so what happened? Uh, um, the, the school didn't happen. Yeah. We became, Still struggling. We, we became busy with work. Right. Still struggling. Still need the technician. Still struggling of taking in more calls because yeah. um, there's no one to, to work with. Right. In right. there. And uh, you know, when you are just one single person, it's yeah. difficult. It's difficult. Absolutely. Unless Absolutely. your wife or daughter or whoever answers the phone for you. Exactly. And then you go yeah. and pick up the parts. And that's still not professional. So right. I always wanted to make this business professional. Yeah. In the uniform, yeah. assigned yeah. trucks, uh, you know, like uh, nice. To, to gain respect, to gain respect back for this trade. Because right. this trade lost its respect a long time ago. And that's what's really important about the appliance industry is like you want to focus on branding. Branding is so important. It's who you are, who your company is, and then who your technicians and staff represent, right? Yes. So you want to hold your values and being professional, having uniformed uh, technicians, Attention. trucks, uh, everything, the whole nine yards. And so branding is so important especially when you have the name Toronto Fine Service. Yes, yes. You want to keep yourself the highest standard. So since that have uh, yeah. faded, mm -hmm. I was still struggling. And of course, right. and of course the life yeah. goes on. You became uniformed, but the technicians are still not performing. And not performing, there's yeah. still issues. They're still right. coming and going. Exactly. And uh, there's, there's, there's a problem always. Right. Uh, with manufacturers, mm -hmm. well, all the manufacturers have problems, not only us, this is, well, this is everyone. everywhere. The, the everywhere. entire industry, there are no trained technicians, period. Yeah. Right? So, uh, um, yes, they don't know, they, they just yeah. don't know. Exactly. They know a little bit, but not much. Right. So, we need to figure out something, how do we make this trade uh, 
successful again. And in powerful, uniform. And powerful. And, yeah. And everything. Exactly. So then, remember we were going uh, in Germany? We drove in Germany. From Hamburg Christmas to Berlin. Christmas 2016 to 2017, New Year's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. about a six hour drive. Yeah. And then you asked me, how was the business going? I well, I've been that. in this business with you for now. <laughs> you know, I was a technician. I remember that I was a technician when I was 14. You sent... Recalls. Me and my brother LG, to LG recalls. LG recalls for the refrigerators. What was that? That was on College Street in front of U of University. T. University. Yeah, yeah. I was. I remember going there door to door. Said hi, excuse me, I need to go and check your refrigerator. I'm wearing you know this oversized large Toronto Pine shirt of this little 14 year old guy, and you know, and I didn't understand what it was or what it meant to be a technician or even for you to have that company then, but you know, growing up into it, being here every summer, and then finally. You know, when we decided in Germany, when you said technicians just aren't what they're supposed to be. And, and then we decided, you know what, you, sh you should open up a training institute. No, and no. Get people to pay you were, to train yeah, them. No, but it was different. We were yeah. driving in, in Germany and they were right. talking. I said, no, no, I'm complaining about the business. And yeah, yeah. About a lot of work, but no people to do the job. Exactly. And then yeah. I mentioned about the school. Oh, yeah, we talked about I that. I mentioned about the school that I had, this, I had this idea. Yeah, yeah. And that's when you say, well, why don't we do it? Let's just do it. Let's just see what it takes. Okay, just so get why them, get them to pay you to teach them? So right? why don't we do it? Exactly. Right. So then I said, okay. Right. April is the month. Yeah, I finished. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so I, I'm a nurse by trade, a cardiac nurse. And I remember I finished nursing school, and I came to work immediately. I came here and I decided, okay, let's see what it takes to open up a training institute. You know, I'm googling like how to open up a training institute, and I'm just straight up just googling everything. Um, and then we, we went step by step, Ministry of Education, you know, you have to do this, this, and this. You have to own a building, uh, you need a physical place, you need to show us what a car your classroom looks like, you know, get the program approvals, this and that. And I said, okay, how long do you think this will take? Remember we went to go see that lawyer? And he said, great idea, I can do it for you 50000 Oh, no. And I said, no, you no. know what? I say, think I can he didn't do say it. 50, he said a lot more than that. He said 45000 minimum. Yeah. And we looked at each other and like, oh my God. Where, what are we paying you for? So, so I remember we, you know, we wrote him up a first initial check. He gave us the, the student contracts. But you were a little bit hesitating because I came to I you. Was, I, said, yeah. I, said, I said, you have to come and start working on it. Well, next, next week, next week, I said, no, no. Yeah, you're yeah. coming tomorrow. Exactly. And tomorrow yeah. you came and yeah. you were sitting like this across my desk. Exactly. Daily, for every eight day. Months. For eight months, you know, I sat at your desk, then I sat in the workshop, I sat, you know, between the tools, the tool shelves, there was a desk, a desk yeah, there. Yeah. I sat at that desk, you had a computer. I didn't have a laptop at the time, so I'm using that old computer, and I just, in the dark, just always, this darkness, but always on the computer, no typing windows, away, no, no windows. windows, no sunlight, just darkness, and just researching, researching, eight months, you know, what, what should I do? And then I said, okay, well, let's hire someone who can, who's done this before and let's get them to do it. So we hired Michael. Remember, he's a program developer and he's an appliance technician. And he helped me navigate because he got program approvals for other colleges, private colleges in, in Toronto before. I was like, this is fantastic. And so we got him to do a lot of that work with well, me. He, you, you've, yeah. done, you've done most of the work. He, he sort of guided, he, you know, he how to jump through the hoops. Fine, but yeah. if, if we didn't... If oh, we had to hire just the lawyers to do this. No way. No, I would, would never do it. would have been a lot back and of money. forth. I don't know what. How much was he charging? Like six hundred bucks an hour. Six hundred. No six, way. Six hundred dollars an hour. Six hundred bucks an hour. Don't know yeah. how much that would be, but that would be a lot of money. Eight months worth of, of, of hourly back and forth. Back you can. I would have never done it. Calculate yourself how much that exactly. would be. Exactly. And so I decided, you know what? I can do this on my own. How many people I called? You know, TSSA. I called these people. I called. Uh, Carmen Fernandez, he was the instructor at George Brown College. He's yeah. the one who instructed the appliance program for 15 years. He's the one who assessed our program and got us the approval, which is amazing with the Ministry of Education. Yeah. But again, eight months alone in the darkness, just putting this all together. And that, that's the grit. Grit is like the sort of psychological term for hard work without motivation. Like you know you need to get the work done, you're going to get the work done. Yeah. That's grit. So the school finally opened. And yeah. we have first students. And yeah. students came, and then, Absolutely. And then the students, uh, well, we had a teacher. We had an instructor, you instructor. know, first time running the college, had, had, I think, two students who started, you know, then we worked up to five. Five who, like, late admission, this and that, you know, 
nobody really knows what the appliance service technician does. And so, you know, our marketing and advertising was sort of like, you know, this is our product, the, the training institute for appliance service technicians, but what do you get from it? Well, you get the training and you get eight weeks co-op. And meantime, right? I'm still struggling. Oh yeah. Because lots oh, yeah. of work. This was May because, 2018 we started. Because lots of work. Right. There's no technicians out there. Still. And yeah. I sit in the office, can I talk to you? I said, yes, can I help you? Well, you know what? Yeah. I think I'm going to quit. Where are you going? Your technicians, right? Yeah, where are you going? Oh, well, right. get different jobs and else, maybe mm -hmm. different offer, better offer maybe, or, or just completely quit in this, this industry and going somewhere else to right. furniture or yeah. construction yeah. or whatever this is. Mm -hmm. And then you're stuck because you don't have a technician. Right. Again. Right. And again, you have to look for one, mm -hmm. another body. You know, exactly. You're going to these meetings once a year to different yeah. places in states or, or, or Vancouver. For the our conferences. Soft, yeah, for conferences, appliance technicians. Appliance technicians. Yeah. I was speaking to um, yeah. basically uh, so many of North American owners of this business. Yes, right, right, right. From Boston, right. from Philadelphia, from yeah. uh, Vancouver, from, uh, yeah. from uh, Montreal, from uh, This uh, is the, the E-Pass conference. Yeah. 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 And, then, and they all have the same problem. Everyone has the same problem of There's no hiring, training. finding yeah. a technician, especially a good technician. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And not only yeah. we are with the private sector, but also yeah. like Whirlpool, Fujidera, LG, LG Samsung, Samsung, manufacturers, manufacturers they, all these guys, yeah. they have issues well, with technicians. But they have, you know what they have, they have, you know, their, their training institutes in their own uh, companies. And so like LG or Whirlpool would train someone, pay them by the hour for six to nine months. Yeah. And, and, you know, you can't afford that as, a, as an appliance private company with only six technicians. And so how are you going to pay someone an hourly rate for nine months to train them? Yeah. And then, you know, they might not even stay after yeah, that. And they end up leaving with yeah. the trade skills. But that training is not, is not uh, how it's supposed to be. Of course. Like Mila, yeah. Mila also, yeah. they have uh, their own uh, training facility. Yeah. But this is for somebody who's who already, already in the trade. No, who already understands. Right. Meaning of electricity, exactly. components, exactly. and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, as somebody who is new in the trade, yeah. you can't just bring them to the shop and show them how just, to take it apart exactly. and, uh, yeah. and put it back together. Right. They need to have understandings exactly. how to read diagrams, how to test yeah. components, yeah. how to yeah. do stuff. They yeah. need to have that understanding. If they don't, they don't. Right. So, with the appliance tech of Canada, mm. today we have the only technicians that finished that school. Yeah, and so the else. entire Toronto Appliance Service team is now uh, all outfitted with Appliance Technical Institute Graduate. of Canada graduates. Graduate. And that's what that was our plan. I know when we started in 2018, you know, it was it's a seven month program. And so if someone starts in September, they won't be ready to actually be on the road making money for you until March, right? And so that followed along, you know, our first batch, um, we had candidates, but they didn't end up staying in the trade. Then we had a second batch. They you know, a few stayed in the trade, um, and then our third batch, 100% stayed in the trade, and now every batch of new students we have, 100% are in the trade, wherever they uh, get their contracts from. So what I'm happy with right and now it's, it's is, fantastic. what I'm happy with right now is, number one, right. I, don't have, I, I don't have to go and look for a technician. Right, and that was the, that, that, that's number that one. was the idea. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, um, mm -hmm. I can compare these guys from the school Oh, that, yeah. that I teach too, you know. Yeah, yeah. Your system, your income instruction seal system. Yeah. That's your yeah. professional. Yeah. So, so um, I have them here. Yeah. They are nice people. Exactly. They are educated. It's right. nice to talk to them. Yeah. yeah. Technical stuff and other exactly. stuff. Exactly. And then you know, customers also they they being satisfied. Oh, the service. The it's service. so important service. to get good yeah. service on our industry. It yeah. drives your company forward. So yes, they don't yeah. know everything yet. They ask exactly. questions, that's which is a of, good thing. That's part right. of that's part of the uh, yeah. the whole uh, uh, you know school and stuff. Right. And uh, until they get to know the stuff by themselves. Exactly. Then, yeah. yeah. So point is, uh, it's a big difference with the guys from the school versus guys who are apprentices without the field. school. Exactly. Very big difference. And I think I think it always comes back to how much you know uh, the Ontario College of Trades was only asking for about a hundred and forty hours of basic electricity. And we ramped it up, right, to like 180 hours of basic electricity. And so it's so important for them to understand everything from the fundamentals of, of what is an electron and then finally moving into comp 
components, magnetrons, DC motors, building a DC motor. Remember that blow, yeah. that blower we have, yeah. Yeah. the the lab we have for them, and really understanding how to test them, wiring diagrams, reading schematics. It's so important for them to know that. Then they move into microwave, dishwasher, washer, soap, and dryer, and okay. then refrigeration. So the comparison between right? the two guys, the, between the school guys and the guys that apprentice I had before, guys. The apprentice guys, and yeah. started before. Yeah. I always had issues with them. They did not know how to read diagrams. Oh my God. Reading yeah. diagrams, of it doesn't yeah. just take one second. You need to understand that. Right. It takes you to school. Yeah. I learned that five years in my school. I mean, we do it five weeks full time, just diagram and schematics. Then we move into appliances yeah. and then refrigeration and diagram schematics. But yes. you know. So once you know these things, yeah. diagram is like a, it, reading the body. Human body, same exactly. Thing. Like they're knowing the anatomy. Yes, exactly. Right. So you I'm just go in there and yeah. you know what and where, where exactly. to go for the problem. Yeah. Once you know how to read the diagrams, oh. then you just know. Yeah, right? of course. Like yeah. How to fix the appliance is that there's least mistakes right. that you can make. Exactly. And okay. it's always, you know, uh, test twice, replace once. Right? Yeah, test twice. That's one of the biggest laws oh. in this industry is test twice, replace once, understand what you're testing. It's called a supper law. You know, supper? No. That's the, the, that's the guy who's uh, this this mental in mind. Oh, I see. Okay. So you can only make one, one mistake there. So you, yeah, have, yeah. you need to test at least a hundred times before you can actually dismantle the mind. Ah, uh, there you go. And right. There, there's no mistakes. That's right. That's uh, right. Over here, we allow mistakes. You know, they, they allow because right. obviously the, yeah. the, uh, the way the people approach the, the, the mother. So mm -hmm. it's all depending on the person. Yes, it's important personality. This job is a good job. And it's a good Absolutely. job, and I want to make that yeah. job to be, to be, to be uh, legit and, uh, and, and like an like HVAC. Or like, like a sought-out profession, and that was our goal. You know, we, we started with Toronto Client Service. I started when I was 14 with you. Then when I was 25, we started the college, and, and, it, and it became into fruition. It was amazing. The first day we got the approval, you know, the first batch we got. But that was the whole idea, is that we wanted to make this training institute to supply Toronto Appliance Service with, with good technicians. Um, and, and it's and not a novel idea. Other industries, HVAC industry does it for sure. All the partnerships they have with you know other colleges supplying uh, businesses with direct employees. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're doing the same. And so we're making sure that Toronto Appliance Service has the best technicians out there. That's what we want to do. And outsourcing. And that's, I'm very, very happy with that because yeah. this is what actually I was always complaining. The whole life of mine I was complaining about where do I get right. my technicians from? You gotta grow your own. Boy. You gotta grow your own. Like children, right? <laughs> oh my God. Well, that's exactly it. Produce, produce. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you do it, right? And so, and that was the biggest part is that when someone invests their own money into coming into this trade, they're more, uh, you know, involved, right? They're seeing their benefits come out of, they're paying for the, the tuition costs. They better make sure that this works out for them. Otherwise, it's a waste of money. Right, but those who are apprenticing from the day one, they get an hourly rate of twenty bucks an hour. They don't care. Six months later, they get let go. They got they made money within that six months. They learned yeah, the trade. Yeah. They get fired by you. They'll go get hired by and someone that's else. That's actually what happened. Right. That's People actually, learn the trade from you. You trained one hundred eighty technicians, and they've all left to, they do, to work for themselves yeah. or someone else. They do learn or they don't learn. The point right. was that. During the period of learning, they still got they paid. They were getting paid, right? Like right on the table, else. exactly. So no issues. Not working, exactly. Getting paid, and that is wrong. Imagine getting paid eight hours a day for sitting in a car and watching someone else watching work. Somebody do work. your job, right? And and that's the point of this institute is that you pay your way through. You know, we we give you an opportunity to get your HVAC license, G three, and domestic appliance. Right. Great, do it. You know, you're getting your domestic commercial appliance uh, training for repair and troubleshooting. Amazing, refrigeration, air conditioning, you get your ODP certification, you can do um, household refrigerators, fantastic. You can either you know, pivot and go into become an HVAC technician or uh, refrigeration, or stay in appliances under the umbrella and you're all of it. You can do all of it. What's and that's good, why our trade is so important. What's good with appliances is yeah. HVAC doesn't know how to fix. No way do they know appliances. how to fix. Microwave, washer. It's different. No it, way. Different things. Absolutely uh, not. Uh, appliance guys, many of them, they don't yeah. know how to do the HVAC. They don't. Well, they don't. They need to get because the licenses. They need to get the licenses. Yeah. And that's so, what we offer, right? So now our company, for example, oh, yeah. we started fixing. 
center uh, conditioners. Yeah, trying to and, find service. Yeah. Yes, and furnaces. And furnaces, exactly. And furnaces, because this is Our part of G, are equipped now. Part of a G2 license. Right. So uh, we, we got yeah. it, we had trained them uh, this spring, whatever. Exactly. Uh, and they fixed fixing right. We're already fixing a lot. That's amazing. Lot. And like, that's the, you know, that's the, the direction of our trade moving into. Yeah. Like we, we are the ones who are the authorized servicers for all domestic and commercial appliances. Yeah. Every single one of them. Whether it's a restaurant, gas stove, who has 250,000 BTUs of burners on it, um, or, you know, refrigeration, commercial, yeah. domestic, yeah. anything, right? And so, An appliance technician can it, really yeah. do his own way. Like yeah. I'm doing appliance technician for, I'm being appliance technician for 31 yeah. years in Canada. Right, okay. yeah, that's amazing. That's it. That's, yeah. it. That's all. But you can do everything. Like you've installed central AC systems. You've yeah. installed before furnaces. You know, you've done everything, and that's what an appliance technician should be able to do. Yeah. Everything domestic, commercial appliance servicing. Yeah, we have the contracts. Some contracts. We we mm -hmm. work for the hospitals. We fixing ice machines. We, right. Exactly. Yeah. We we uh, also do a commercial sometimes here and there, um, mm -hmm. rooftop units. Yeah. Air conditioners yeah. and or. Uh, are you rooftop units for the walking coolers or right. freezers? Yeah. We fix those things. See, we're the, we're the only appliance servicing training institute in, in Ontario. And, and not even that, we're the only training student in Eastern Canada. We have another uh, university in Vancouver who's been teaching appliance servicing for six, uh, since 1960. Yeah. And, and they've done a pretty good job. The problem with them is they only have you know one sponsor. And so when you're teaching only one appliance sponsors uh, yeah. appliances it's an issue you know moving into like lg and samsung and stuff like that but us being you know the only training institute in eastern canada we get students from uh, winnipeg uh, we're getting vancouver students coming over here staying here for four months then going back to their province to do their co-op placements it's amazing how much we've grown in only two years Whoa. and how important we are for the industry in canada let alone yeah, North america no and people asking our manufacturers yeah. asking for the uh for, for, for the technicians to come to see if they're available for their for their oh, we've industry. been oh yeah we've been reached out by all manufacturers go manufacturers to have our students and graduates be directly sourced out to them and to them and you know we're just not in a position to do that just yet but no but but you know right every now, technician has a decision to make when it comes to different yeah. names of appliances yeah I agree that we should be like the technician should be learning all brands of appliances. Absolutely, absolutely. Because yeah. some of them are similar, it's some true. of them are not. More technologically advanced, those some of LG them more, Samsung. some of them less. Exactly. Point is that yeah. they should know all brands. Right. This way, that person or persona has opportunity to work almost anywhere. Exactly. That's okay, right. that's the idea of, t of yeah. teaching this in our school. Right. And I said to my technician because like before, you know, this yeah. uh, is to be serious. They had uh, technicians dedicated to fix only refrigeration systems, right. only sealed systems. Yeah, yeah. They had uh, technicians dedicated to repair only uh, refrigeration, but not sealed systems. That's right. Then they had technicians uh, dedicated to repair stoves and ovens. Right. Yeah. And then they had uh, washing machine, dishwasher, and dryer. Right. right. So right. now, after the seals collapsed, and that was like a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, we were kind of happy that we we're gonna finally get some quality guys exactly. coming over to work for us exactly. and uh, they were coming here a yeah. lot yeah um, 25 years experience working mm -hmm. at business sure come over here i said okay they can be hired tomorrow yeah. Yeah. but you know i only do a seal system on refrigeration i saw the washers and dryers right no, I, don't. I have no idea no idea no, idea. So, no stove yeah. washer and dryer yeah. but then i can hire you Right, because, uh, absolutely. because we can't be like serious that uh, yeah. they, they, they were sending three different technicians to the same house. Really? Because wow. each of them was doing different stuff. Right. So right. because they were they, they were kind of uh, uh, trained like robots. Yeah, only yeah. in their designated um, appliances, laundry equipment, stoves, uh, refrigeration, that's it. In a way that could have been good. Yeah. That could have been good. Efficiency but, maybe, but, but in a certain way. If you think yeah. about, for example, this wash. Right. Are you supposed to change or or carburetor? Is yeah. Underneath the sink. Exactly. So if you are only dishwasher, you don't have nothing to do with plumbing. Um, you can't change a carburetor. Yeah. You need to right. call a plumber. Exactly. But that's so easy to replace. You can do that yourself. Right. I mean, yourself. Right. Technicians can do that, right? Yeah. You can yeah. redo the design of the plumbing. Yeah. To yeah. fit the carburetor in, for example. Exactly. Right. right. Now, if if you, if you only uh, uh, dedicated to 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 one mm -hmm. 
kind of job. Like for example, sealed system only for example refrigeration. Right. And if something else goes goes with a, like a defrost issue or whatever this is, yeah. you don't know how to fix it. And they that you're not a good technician. Well exactly. In, in my mind, yeah. good technician is that does not yeah. know everything. Right. Knows stoves, yeah. air conditioners, mm -hmm. you know some uh, dishwashers, washers, dryers, right. Right. knows uh, definitely sealed system working with different type of gases. Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, that, that that's out there right now. Mm -hmm. I know how to behave and do all this. That's yeah. a good appliance technician. Exactly. I'll tell you we've had we've had Sears technicians come forward to take our program before. Oh. Well, because you know the one guy came. I remember so vividly. And he only does laundry equipment, washer dryer, and he's been going around companies trying to get a position with a uh, servicing company for two years, and no one would hire him. And so of course I'm like, yes, of course you can come in. Right? He came in, did the basic electricity, did the microwave, dishwasher, washer, stove, and dryer, and then did refrigeration, air conditioning, something he's never touched before. And yeah. well, he's working That's, in the field now, and so yeah. So what what happened is mm -hmm. so um, Sears has disabled so many people. So many people. For, How many? For not teaching them. Yeah. Uh, they had nice trainings. I remember right. I used, when we had a concert with Sears for five years. Yeah. We uh, I was going myself attending the whole day training. Mm -hmm. And it was an old Amana machine uh, right. to, to replace bearings and transmission and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Who's going to do faster? It's all mechanical. Right. That was a good uh, training facility. Yeah. Although they haven't teach nothing in, in theory, but right. it was only to show you how to take it apart and, mm -hmm. and tips on, on the on the problems here and there. Exactly. But they only teach these guys for the washers and the guy for the fish. And that's it. That. And they didn't mind because it was an hourly rate. You know, Sears, Sears was never meant to collapse. No yeah. one ever thought that they were going to collapse, uh, but it's just few wrong moves and the entire the entire corporation went still down. appliance industry was holding up Sears for a long time right exactly because they had they had yeah. very strong programs in there they were yeah. buying appliances from manufacturers naming them cold spot mm -hmm. or, or uh, Sears or right. uh, Canmore mm -hmm. that was the brand name yeah uh, and they were purchased their appliances made by Whirlpool by uh, Bosch by right. other manufacturers yeah. so that's that's not bad there but uh, as you said uh, in here, we yeah. need to have a um, technician who knows. Exactly. Everything. Fundamental training is what's really important. Yeah. So I think we struck you know, the nail right on the head. Um, it, we got the training right. I think the people we're seeing come through are exactly what we're looking for and the exact training that we were meant to give. Yeah. Yeah. And it, there's always room for improvement, right? We can always include more sealed system and, and more education on that, but overall, you know, the inclusion well, of R600 gas. Listen, and in, in, that. even years ago, somebody right. show you how to do the seal system. Right. Not like today. Today it's a totally different. You, yeah. can, you can show a person seal system job. Mm -hmm. he to, you know, he needs to still use his uh, logical thinking. Right. How yeah, to yeah. approach the appliance yeah. because when you're at home, right. you're here in the warehouse, it's easy and simple, easy access. But right. when you're at home, at home, uh, different uh, issues there. There's an island in the middle, there's not enough floor, space, not enough yeah. space, marble or hardwood, marble or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. it is that's what makes it difficult. Absolutely. Plus you have the whole mm -hmm. crowd watching you doing the job. Always over your shoulder, <laughs> just breathing down your neck, watching you, <laughs> or the dog always coming right at yeah, you. Exactly. Under your under your so shoulder. So that's another another yeah. uh, discomfort where you feel not uh, comfortable right. to do your job, especially exactly. if you don't know something. Yeah. But it comes with experience. Point is yeah. a good technician always comes when it gets it very nice base of the knowledge fundamental. of fundamental knowledge of appliances exactly. oh, electricity yep basic yeah. electricity uh, how things flow how exactly. these, uh, right. things work yeah and then uh, after that just uh, look at everybody else that's right everything falls into part the place yeah exactly that exactly that um, so yeah. that, that's that's what happens mm -hmm. uh, but you can't teach this mm -hmm. when the person walks from the street no, like an apprenticeship. And sits in my vehicle. Cannot. And I'm going to be yeah. talking to his ear. He's not going to even listen. From one listen side to, to the other, and that's exactly. it. Exactly. He's yeah. going to come to the house, he's going to yeah. observe what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. Right. He still doesn't know exactly. what's happening. So yeah. he needs to be involved personally. That's right. You know, this co-op place that we have, that they come here for two months and they go, yeah. that's already after the school. That's exactly. already after they know how to take things apart. Here right. And right. And they're going for two months. Yeah seeing so many appliances it's a long day. time 360 hours on yeah. the road you know after formal training so these guys that i have from yeah. the school lately yeah they are uh, like i said i'm very happy with them because yeah. 
they showing interest or interest. They showing that they yeah. know something. Right. They right. showing that uh, they asking questions. Sometimes yeah. they do ask questions that yeah. are not relevant to the issue. Right. But yeah. they bottom line is they, they fix them up lines. Exactly. That's they right. go into a test. That's right. And I hear them talking sometimes here. Oh, he made me go do this, this test, that test, this test. Well, good. Well, well, listen. I mean, we go to do the test because we need to to test it. Exactly. Because exactly. you can't just come to the house and look at the appliance, that's like right. a movie in the cinema, exactly, and, and then comment on that. No, you need you to do touch the it, you that's need to right. touch it, you need to open right. it, you have to yeah. test this. That's and there's right. something visible that doesn't require you to yeah. go inside. That's mm-hmm. fine, but but if it's the appliance that there's a problem, you need to that's exactly open it. it. That's it. You yeah. can't just touch. And most of the technicians that uh, we know out there, yeah. and we go, you know, to a calls uh, after some different companies, just like they right. go after us. This is yeah, whatever, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. And you hear from customers. He just came in, you look at it, he sniffed it, and he went. He ordered the part. What part is he ordering? Like, yeah, exactly. What? He didn't take it apart, didn't test anything, yeah, but he, he must know, yeah. right? And so it doesn't, you know, of course, come with experience, you, you have an idea of, of where you should take your route, but you still got to take it apart, test these components, understand what the problem is, and then diagnose it properly. Fix are fixable. Yeah, You're yeah. smart. You can yeah, fix yeah. them. You can diagnose it in five, ten minutes, maybe. Right. Yeah. Uh, sometimes if you're not so experienced mm-hmm. and you want to take more time, well, yeah. it's going to take you half an hour, 40 minutes, but you're still going to diagnose yeah, it. You right. need to diagnose it. You exactly. just spend your time in the customer house because today right. you spent more time to diagnose. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow you spend five minutes to replace part. Right. But that's right. It. Well, that was, a, that was a great first episode. I know we went much longer than we thought we would. This was supposed to be 15 minutes. I ended up going almost 40. Well, there's a lot so. of things to say. There's tons oh, yeah. of things. There's lots of history on it. All right, right. Lots of things to say. Exactly. And, you, you know, we're going to do this every day or every sometime. Every week we'll have a new episode, and so we'll, we'll continue. It's 32 um, years of history. We have a lot to talk about, <laughs> but okay. Okay. Cheers, All right. Bro. Thank you. And we think great.